Welcome back dear students. In today's session, I am going to give you the line by line explanation of the poem I Remember, I Remember written by Thomas Hood. This is a video on request. Thomas Hood was an English poet born in London. And now we will come to this section. Page number 13, treasure chest. Very, very important. I Remember, I Remember was first published in 1844. Learn this section. Ye section bahut important hai. Ye chota sa ek section hai. Magar yaha pe themes discuss kiya gaya hai. The poet addresses the gloomy and uncertain adulthood in the light of a perfect childhood and that makes the narrative universal. Yaha pe ek contrast hai. Kaun sa wala contrast hai? Kaun sa difference hai? Gloomy, uncertain adulthood versus Perfect childhood. Thomas Hood. Kya yaad kar rahe hai yaha pe? Apna perfect childhood. And he is comparing that with his sad and uncertain adulthood. He is an adult. Ab wo ek bachche nahi hai. Ek bachcha jo khush tha apne jeevan mein. Magar ab wo ek adult hai, wo bade ho gaye hai. Aur wo apne jeevan se khush nahi hai. The poet feels that the time passes by. Another theme, the fleeting nature of time. Samay kisi ke liye nahi rukta. Samay hamesha behta jata hai. Aur is behti samay mein hum kya dekhte hai? Bahut saare cheeze piche hum chhod ke aage bad jate hai jeevan mein. And only memories remain behind. Yaade reh jati hai. Aur hum jeevan mein aage bad jate hai. I remember, I remember. What is special here? Look at the title. Repetition of the expression I remember, I remember. What is the significance of this repetition? What is the significance of this title? Justify the appropriateness of the title. Prepare an answer. I kon hai? Thomas Hood hai I yaha pe. Mujhe yaad hai, mujhe yaad hai. Kis ko yaad hai? Thomas Hood ko yaad hai. Aur kya yaad hai apne? बचपन में वो लौट गए हैं अपने बचपन को वो यहां पे याद कर रहे हैं एंड देयर इज अ कॉन्ट्रास्ट बिटवीन द पास्ट चाइल्डहुड मेमोरीज एंड हिज प्रेजेंट कंडीशन हिज प्रेजेंट स्टेट ऑफ माइंड द टाइटल इज सजेस्टिव इट इज अपीलिंग एंड इट डायरेक्टली रेफर्स टू द थीम ऑफ रिकलेक्शन ऑफ द पास्ट द थीम ऑफ नोस्टैल्जिया एंड द थीम ऑफ मेमोरीज यादे the first stanza. I remember, I remember, mujhe yaad hai. Kya yaad hai? The house where I was born. The little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. What is the meaning of morn? The word morn means morning. Now here is a figure of speech. The sun is personified. The sun is given human attributes. And the peeping originally refers to the sun's gentle rays falling inside the poet's room in the morning. And the poet remembers the sun very well from his childhood. According to him, the sun never came a wing too soon nor brought too long a day. The sun never showed a minute too early or shone for more than the required hours. Therefore, the sun here is shown as a balanced Careful and polite person. Someone who follows a decent routine. Unhe sun and the rays of the sun wo bright mornings bahut achhi tarike se yaad hai. Aur wo bahut khush bhi hai jab wo in mornings ke baare mein yaha pe baat kar rahe hai. I remember, I remember. See, the repetition has another significance. The figure of speech used here is anaphora. The phrase I remember is repeated at the beginning of each stanza. First stanza I remember, I remember. Second stanza may be hai I remember, I remember. Third, fourth may be ye repetition hai. So what is the figure of speech? The figure of speech write down is anaphora. I remember is repeated at the beginning of each stanza to Highlight the theme of memories, remembrance and also provide the poem 
with its lyrical tone. The poem is a lyric and I have given the definition of lyric here. Just go through the definition. Repetition of I remember is thus important. Now coming back to stanza 1 once again. Let's start our discussion. In the first stanza, the poet talks about the house where he was born. His remembrances of the sun's rays peeping through the window at morning indicates his childish ignorance. Wo bahut saral the. Poet Thomas Hood jab chote the, bachpan mein wo bahut saral the. He enjoyed each morning. He enjoyed each day. And the memories of the sun peeping through the window in the morning reveals the speaker's naivety as a child. Wo khush ho jate the jab bhi wo neen se utke rays of the sun ko dekhte the wo bahut khush ho jate the. Unhe achha lagta tha. Har morning neen se uthna aur sara din wo kya karte the? Wo apne aap ko enjoy karte the. Wo bahut happily wo din bitate the. Isi liye he looked forward to each and every morning and morning is a symbol of a fresh beginning and every day the bright sun, the rays of the bright sun welcomed the poet who was a child. Childish innocence and the naivety of a child. Matla, ek bachcha bahut saral hota hai. Poet bhi bahut saral the jab wo bachche the. But now, tab ki baat alag tha. Ab baat kuch alag hai. Ab wo ek adult hai. Wo ek grown up person hai. So the past was different. But now, I often wish the night had borne my breath away. The night is also personified. The night is like a person who has the capability of taking the breath of the poet away. Wo yaha pe kehna kya chate hai? Wo yaha pe keh rahe hai? Kaash mein mar gaya hota. Aaj ye din mujhe nahi dekhna padta. Aisa kya hua hai? Jo wo itne hatash hai. What do you think is the mood of the poet here? He is depressed. He is gloomy. He is sullen. Wo bahut dukhi hai. Wo bahut depressed hai. Isi liye wo unhe lagta hai kaash wo agar mar gaye hote to aaj ye din unhe dekhna nahi padta. There is a difference between past and the present. Childhood was a perfect childhood but his Adulthood is now gloomy and uncertain. We have discussed this just a little while ago. So, the depiction of the sunshine and daytime represents the brighter and happier period of his life. Bachman mein wo bahut khush the, wo nishchint the, magar ab wo itne khush nahi hai, bilkul hi khush nahi hai, wo dukhi hai. And there is a gap, a large gap between the past and the present. Two time frames, past, childhood and present, adulthood. And there is a gap. The pain that this life is causing him is evident in his desire to be gone with the night. So here he wishes that he died long ago with the passage, with the passing away of the night. The image of the night is significant. It stands for everything from darkness and hopelessness to suffering and hollowness. And also stands for Thomas Hood's depressed and gloomy adult self. Wo bahut dukhi hai. And the image of night, night is dark. And the life of the poet is also engulfed in darkness. I remember, I remember the roses, red and white. So from the house, we shift to his garden. In the first stanza, he fondly remembered his house and now he is remembering his garden. And the beautiful nature, the bountiful nature with blossoms, with beautiful flowers all around. We can almost visualize his garden. The roses, red and white, the violets and the lily cups 
those flowers made of light so here he introduces the readers to a more lively setting from his house we move to his garden and he here speaks about a great variety of colorful flowers and he witnessed them blooming in his childhood jab wo bachpan mein apne garden mein ghoomte the tab wo in sab फ्लास को देखते थे और उनके जो ब्यूटी है उन्हें वो एंजॉय करते थे वो ऑब्जर्व करते थे लैप ऑफ नेचर हियर वी हैव एन अबंडेंस ऑफ कलर कितने सारे कलर्स हैं, ब्राइट कलर्स वाइब्रेंट कलर्स एंड दिस सिंबलाइज द हैप्पीनेस इन द लाइफ ऑफ द पोइट वेन ही वॉज अ चाइल्ड हिज लाइवलीनेस हिज ऑप्टिमिज्म द फ्लास the image of the flowers is an example of visual imagery imagery also plays an important part in this poem those flowers made of light what is the significance of this those flowers were delicate and fragile made of light there is metaphor here it metaphorically hints at how heavenly how beautiful and how ephemeral these flowers appeared ye sundar flowers bahut jald shayad itne sundar nahi rahenge aur ye jhad jayenge so these flowers made of light but when he was a child he did not realize this he is an adult now he knows that nothing is permanent now he realizes that time is fleeting with the passage of time everything is going to change the beautiful flowers the fresh flowers will soon perhaps change to withered flowers the lilacs where the robin built so here he picks up an incident from the past he speaks about a robin's nest in the lilacs and this provides a sense of comfort and the lilacs and the robin are fond memories of the poet's childhood he also speaks about his own house another image that gives us a sense of comfort and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday the tree is living yet he speaks about the laburnum tree this brings us to a painful memory the tree is still surviving but unfortunately the brother of the poet is dead wo mar chuke hain and this is perhaps one of the reasons why the poet is so sad and depressed he lost his brother the tree is a reminder of his buried past and this tree is a token from his brother who is no longer alive as an adult he now realizes that his brother will no longer come back his brother will never come back he has now understood what is death jab wo chote the shayad unhe death kya hai iske bare mein kuch pata hi nahi tha and now as an adult he has acquired this knowledge with the passage of time he has become wise mature he has acquired knowledge real world practical experience but he now realizes that he had to pay a heavy price for it he has lost his childish ignorance and he has lost his childhood innocence jo bachpan ka jo saralta hai wo ab kabhi wapas nahi lautega i remember i remember where i was used to swing and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing here he remembers the time in his life when he used to swing very high and freely and this simple act of swinging is an example of metaphor comparison kya hai this is important you must know this before that let me tell you another figure of speech is used here my spirit flew in feathers then what is the figure of speech alliteration flew and feathers flew starts with an f and feathers also starts with an f 
what is the meaning of this here he compares his carefree childhood with the present where he is now burdened with the worries the anxieties the cares of adult life of his adulthood my spirit flew in feathers then there is a comparison direct comparison here tab mera jo jeevan tha wo alag tha ab mera jo jeevan hai wo alag hai tab my spirit he is speaking about his spirit his spirit flew in feathers as light as feathers पंछी पंछियों की तरह वो आकाश में वो झूले में झूलते थे और आकाश को वो चूमते थे मगर अब ही इज हिज लाइफ इज नाउ हैवी विथ प्रॉब्लम्स विथ ऑब्स्टिकल्स विथ सैडनेस डिप्रेशन होपलेसनेस सो देर इज एन इमेज ऑफ अ केयर फ्री चाइल्ड अ चाइल्ड एंजॉइंग हिज लाइफ टू द फुलेस्ट and there is also another image of an adult who is weighed down by the problems of his adulthood past versus present significant metaphor and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow ab wo bimar hai what is this fever this fever is metaphorical this fever shows that he is not in a good state of mind the fever will not go down nothing can give him the soothing effect bachpan mein jab wo summer pools mein jaate the wo bahut calm feel karte the wo bahut enjoy karte the magar ab those memories also will not be able to cure him of his fever what is his fever fever of hopelessness sadness he is now growing more and more exhausted and the daunting weight the heavy weight of adulthood looms over him the present concerns are so prominent that no childhood memories of summer pools can cool down the fitful fever the fitful fever of his life the poet cannot just simply move back into his comforting memories and he feels dejected to think that now nothing can soothe his adult heart i remember i remember the fir trees dark and high i used to think their slender tops were close against the sky his childish ignorance when he was a child he used to think that the slender tops of the fir trees were close against the sky it was a childish ignorance but now it is little joy to know i am farther off from heaven than when i was a boy another contrast he laments over the loss of innocence as an adult and this is the dominant theme of this poem the fir trees that stood dark and high against the sky made the little boy think that they were close to the sky heaven unhe lagta tha jab wo chote the ye fir trees aasman ko choom rahe hain aasman ke kitne paas hai swarg ke kitne paas hai magar ab jab wo bade ho gaye hain unhe ye pata hai wo swarg se kitne dur hai i am farther off from heaven than when i was a boy he realizes how naive saral kitne saral the wo how naive he was and it was his ignorance which made him believe that heaven was not far off jab wo chote the unhe lagta tha swarg kitne kareeb hai main jaunga aur swarg pahunch jaunga however now his reasoning and intellect no longer bring him comfort instead this makes him feel as though heaven is out of his reach now and towards the end of this poem what is the mood of the poet what is the tone the poet's tone is pensive and hopeless there is hopelessness there is pessimism he is pensive matlab he is sad wo bahut dukhi ho gaye hain 
he longs to return to the blissful period the happy period and remain unbothered there indefinitely magar ye hone nahi wala hai because time is fleeting time will pass and with the passage of time he will become wiser he will become he will gain more and more knowledge and he will be removed from the blissful period of his childhood so dear students this is the poem the rose is red and white the fir trees dark and high brings out the color imagery the cheerful red and the coming white reflect the mood of the speaker jab wo chote the wo bahut khush the and this happiness and ease one feels as a child is reflected in the color imagery